So, to just continue this, what is software product management all about and what are the changes that we see? I will give you a little bit of a short overview on some of the things that I found when looking around on what is state of the art, or at least current state, and what are the typical challenges that we experience? I think we skip these because we know those already. So, and bear with me, these are a few reflections and I hope we agree on them, but I mean, if we look at software product management, there are lots of frameworks around. There are guidelines such as, for example, SAFE, I think, Many of you in the room are familiar with the same SAFE framework, where product management is one of the key roles and responsibilities, of course. There is an association that I will also introduce you to in the very end of this session, International Software Product Management Association, to which both me and Jan are affiliated. They have a framework, they have a whole body of knowledge on uh, how to conduct software product management, and there are other frameworks. So there is a lot of guidelines available for this role. There are methods, and if we look at the software center companies, we see quite an interesting shift going much more customer-oriented, customer-centric. We hear companies, especially when developing more and more on the service side, working with service innovation, saying that, design thinking or more continuous exploration with customers is really what we need. So there are methods for that as well on how to work close to customers. Of course, an interesting part of product management is the whole coordination and alignment of roles and competencies. We see mechanisms for that as well. And of course, models for more of the business case identification and validation. So there is a lot of those guidelines around, and I think you know them much better than what I know them. But just to mention a few, this is how SAFE presents the role and responsibilities of a product manager, software product manager working as you could say the spider in the net in between very many different units and responsibilities in an organization and responsible for everything from value delivery to connecting with the customer, working on strategy, etc., etc. That's one way to, to illustrate it. I mentioned ISPMA. That is an organization bringing together product managers from all over the world, also researchers. They have their own framework where they have basically outlined the core competencies and responsibility areas for a software product manager. What you see in blue is where they are supposed to spend the core of their time and their responsibility. What is gray is participation. And when I see this, I start to wonder, who is this person who can do all of these things? <laughs> but then again, it is a very critical role and very, very often more than one person. But as you see here, it is also clearly connected to the whole strategy and planning of products. So that's their framework. And then if you look at research papers, you find all kinds of reference models on what software product management is and should be all about. An interesting note, both in this one and in this one, is that they're very focused on it always starts in a requirement. And as a general reflection, not criticism necessarily, but reflection, is that it tends to be presented in a quite silo-oriented fashion. It is very difficult here, for me at least, to see and understand all of the iterations and the cycles that are going on within each of these responsibility areas and phases of development, deployment, planning, etc., etc. So that's maybe one of the reasons to why we have this discussion and this session. Because in our experience, and based on what Jan presented just now, there is a shift towards much more of iterative, incremental, shortened cycles. This role is still super critical, but we believe it needs to change. And very often, the current frameworks doesn't necessarily provide the support you might need for working in these shorter cycles and with development going towards a much more of an MVP fashion than maybe the complete functions 
and solutions. One blog recently outlined this when talking about how to advance your product thinking as a senior product manager, saying that you should be able to cover all of these, but to advance, to really advance, this is where you should spend your time, and these are the things then you need to understand. You need to know and understand switching factors from your customers. You really need to understand the ecosystem in which you operate, and you need to reposition and continuously work on uh, increasing your power in the ecosystem. And then I think we also realize the strategic importance and how the landscape is then shifting. It is not only about the product and the solution itself, but it is all about the ecosystem. So I'm going to give a little bit of a trend, uh, trend spawning, a little bit of a trend overview on what are then the things that might change software product management going forward and that we see in the software center companies. And Jan already mentioned this already this morning and also in his previous talk, the shorter cycles, the DevOps, the ways in which we now connect development and operations. We use data coming back from the field and we can actually increase the speed of development. That to us has a significant impact on the role and responsibility and the ways of work of a software product manager. Then we see the whole digital technology space with data and AI primarily. We have the opportunity to not only deliver value, we can deliver value on a continuous basis. Frequent, periodic updates of the functionality we deliver. We can improve the systems over time, which of course also mean that we can monetize on a more continuous basis. So there is a huge shift in business models. And not the least when it comes to the new types of business models, customer KPI based revenue and two sided markets. And for those of you, I, th I think we are you are all aware of them, but when I say customer KPI model, I mean that as a company, you monetize not only on the product you deliver, but you monetize on how well that product fulfills the critical KPIs of the customer. And we typically use Abe Volvo as an example, because if you are a fleet owner or, and you drive a truck, you can monetize on the number of successful deliveries. That would be a customer KPI. And that is, of course, an entirely different way of monetizing than just monetize on the truck. Two-sided markets refers to the opportunity on where you collect data with your existing customer base, but you can actually sell it to someone else. And those opportunities are something that we hear and see more and more about. So business models comes with new technologies, and that's within the product management scope as well. And then finally, the whole notion of ecosystems. New entrants, for each technology, there is typically a new competitor, new entrant, or you could keep out, you could align. There is so many strategies and approaches to take. Disruption is something that we see all over the industry. And then new novel collaboration models and who to keep in and who to keep out. And then platforms and marketplaces. So there is a lot of transition and lots of things going on in the different business ecosystems. And if you refer back to that slide I showed, what is senior product management about? Understanding the business ecosystem. So that's where we should then spend our time. So as a bit of a start of discussion, or at least something to put in the back of your mind, what could it look like? And this might align, I hope, a little bit with what Jan presented. So going forward, software product management in the age of AI, this is how you could think about it. We have AI technologies. We still have our human role and capacity in all of this. There are situations that are highly certain stable requirements, for example, and you have situations where you do not really know and where things change really fast, more on the outcome, data-driven uh, situation or scenario. So for each of these, there are, of course, approaches that you could consider and that suits you better or less good. 
So for very certain and stable environments, if you use AI, well, then you create the model, you have the data set in place, and you basically let it operate, and you don't touch it. You could do requirements engineering, very successfully so, in situations and in systems where requirements make sense. But if you are uncertain, and you as a person you need to learn more, well, then experimentation comes into play, like the A-B testing scenario that we just heard about. Or if you use AI, that's when you go and retrain models, reinforcement learning even. So this is a little bit of a framework on how to think about how we understand and deliver value in the products we use. There are challenges. Very often, and to be honest, I don't think that product managers are the only ones. But we try, we typically seek to create an illusion of certainty. It is so much easier to operate in a certain environment. So even if it's not that case, we at least try to pretend that's the case. That leads to a few difficulties. Typically, then, we end up in the requirements bucket much more often that, than what is beneficial, even if we would be much better off within the experimentation space. And then what we see as a result of that is, in our experience, the adoption and use of the more experimental approaches is still quite limited, at least uh, not to the extent that we would really benefit from. So these are two questions. Jan had many questions. I think I have only two, but they relate. How to change current product management practices to work with digital technologies and digital offerings? That would be one. And what is the future of product management and key characteristics of strategic digital product management?